pay attention to the علم um, الباطن. And then he, I think he speaks about Fadl Kifaya, Fadl Kifaya, but I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I read it and I don't know where it was. Anyways, Fadl Kifaya is the thing that we, we don't have to, all of us have to do. It's, if one of us do it, if one of us uh, studies a certain science, then everybody else is absolved. For instance, um, like we mentioned about medicine, if someone studies medicine, then he has covered uh, his, his the responsibility for us to, to study that is no longer there. But uh, it's interesting how some scholars said that fardu um, ain, <laughs> whatever is wajib for you, is is very is, has a lot of rewards. But if you do something which others need, uh, it has it has more rewards. So it's fard kifaya, but you have you get more rewards doing that uh, because you absolve others from from doing it. And he, then, then he speaks about these furud, these uh, sciences, uh, and he says that, so he, he takes a, a medicine, which is very noble, because that's a very honorable and noble science, and then he compares it to the science of, uh, of fiqh. So now he gets into the fiqh. And he says that uh, the science of medicine has to, it deals with, deals with the organs, the blood, uh, other things which are physical. Which is very important, but the science of uh, fiqh is uh, is more honorable. There's no no comparison. The science of fiqh has to, it deals it deals with um, uh, with the, the Sharia, and he says, "Ilam al fiqha mujawirun li ilmi tariq al akhira." This knowledge of fiqh is the companion, or is your companion in your path to the hereafter. That's why. There's no comparisons between these sciences and the science of fiqh. So it's very, very uh, way above everything else. Because if the heart, uh, and then he speaks about the heart. If the heart is good, then the, the, the limbs um, the limbs will behave properly. And then he gets into something else. He says, um, he speaks about, of course, the, the sciences of the heart that we saw last time. And then he says, what if we, let's speak about the sciences of, of the heart. And, and if someone asks you, what, what are the details? He says there are two things to do with the sciences of the heart. So the, the one is the mukashafa, and the one is mu'amala. And mukashafa, if you recall the first book that I mentioned, uh, uh, the first class, what was it? Jazakallah khair. So this is what he's talking about. Mukashafa al qulub is the thing that unveil uh, from, from your heart, or that, that unveil, and then you see with, with uh, a heart. That is very pure. So that's what he speaks about. And then mu'amala. And then mu'amala, some of us may, uh, our minds may go very far. What do you think is mu'amala? It has to do with the heart. When we speak in fiqh, <coughs> mu'amala is the second part of fiqh, which is ibadat and mu'amala. So it has to do with the, with, uh, <coughs> con- yeah. Yeah, contracts, uh, politics. Uh, divorce, marriage, um, inheritance, and so on. But um, you know, there's no problems in, in, in terminologies. In the fiqh, this word is used for something else. In the fiqh of suluk is used for something else. In this science, mu'amala is used for um, a different... We'll, we'll speak about it in a minute. So al-mukashafa, he says, amma ilmu al-mukashafa fahuwa ilmu al-batin. So it is the science of the heart. And, and last last week, uh, remember your name, Ahmed? No, forget no. Ahmed. He, he, he summarized the, the whole thing in, in just one one phrase. He said, we're talking about how you deal with yourself, with everyone else, and with Allah. So this is what it's all about. So this is what we uh, what we all hear about, is to try and understand how we purify our hearts and our behavior with each other and with Allah. So al-mukashafa, is al ilm al batin so there's a lot of definitions so here's one of the definitions he says if you don't have this knowledge we fear for your end so al mukashafa i think i don't know if i mentioned it to you in the past but al mukashafa is what the arifin can be that's been in a state where can be in that state all the time you know imam al ghazali in the book of mukashafa al qulub he, 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 when he speaks about Laylatul Qadr, he said some people see Al-Arsh. 
in the night. They can see the angels. And some people are in that state all the time. And I, I think I've mentioned this before. <laughs> How the Prophet Sallallahu was, was sitting with his companions and the angel came with something from Jannah. This is Mukashava. He was, he, he's able to see everything all the time. <coughs> These things are, are not, but they don't speak about it. You think that Abu Bakr didn't experience these things? It's, that, it's just that he did not speak about them. Because uh, it has to do with spiritual experience. And spiritual experience is not something which you can articulate. Others will not understand. And it will remain vague. Even if I tell you something, it will remain vague. And, and we, have, we have the proof. Dalil, if you want, Dalil is in, in Bukhari and Muslim. It's in, in the hadith. Um, who was uh, the companion. He'll come, his name will come, come to me. He was praying at night. He was reading Quran. And his camel was outside. And his baby was there too. So as he was reading, he heard this camel getting wild. This another story? Huh? Who's the companion? Yeah. Yeah, they came. They came to listen to him. And, and in the morning, he went to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Why didn't you continue? Had you continued, they would have remained there until the morning. Subhanallah. So these these things happened. They, they might like there was like a beautiful uh, hue or a halo of of light above him. This is in the Sahih. So the companions used to used to experience these things. And we've mentioned the beautiful hadith also in Bukhari where where the man complained to Abu Bakr and told him, he told him, uh, I'm a hypocrite. And when they went to the Prophet said, if you remain in that state that you are with me, after you leave, you would shake hands with with the angels. So this is the Mukashafa and some of these awliya had this this uh, state all the time. But we said also, and why I'm, I'm, I'm going back to this is because he says, "Man lam yakun lahu nasibun fi al-alam, ilmi akhaf wa alaihi misun khatima." So he's very strict. He says, "The one who does not know this knowledge, does not have this knowledge, I fear for his ending. You know, his ending might not be a good ending." Um, but the scholars have said, Imam al-Katani, rahimahullah, hafizahullah, uh, Ibrahim Abu al-Bahr al-Katani from Egypt, he says that. We all will experience a mukashfa in the last moment of our life. What's the verse? لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ That moment you will be able to see the angels. The angels of death will be there. You will see that, that thing which we don't see now will be there. And, uh, and, and there are a lot of beautiful stories. Uh, from the even today contemporary people who have seen these, these beautiful experiences. And in the days of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who of the who who of the kuffar saw the angels? Abu Jahl. Wow. Jazakallah khair. Abu Jahl. So Allah brings he, he makes them see those things but as as a punishment. So they, they were terrified. He was terrified. And apparently, uh, not a story from uh, the Salaf al Salih. Um, what's his name? Uh, the uh, no, no. Uh, when when he wanted to um, to hurt the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Al Thaqafi. What's his name? Al Hajjaj. Al Hajjaj. Called one of the you know one of the companions over the tabi'in, and when and he, when he was coming to him, he was reading a beautiful du'a, which I can share with you after if you want. And he when he reached to Al Hajjaj, Al Hajjaj was known to uh, to be a real a real oppressor. He would you know cut, cut his head or kill him. A'udhu billah. It was bad. So he came and he stood up, and he you know he made him sit where he was sitting. And when he left, he said, what did, what did you do? You were calling him to, to execute him. He says, behind him, there were two huge, either angels or two huge, uh, um, uh, some, some animals behind him that protected him. So he saw something. So some of these mukashafats for, for the bad is like a punishment or a warning or a caution. And for the good people, the, 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 it's, only, it's only a matter of it's, it's peace. And, and uh, the, the arifin, they, they feel this. But they don't share it. They don't really talk, talk about it. So here's he says if you don't if you don't um, uh, 
if you don't see this or if you don't have this knowledge, then I fear for your bad end. Of course, in another in another definition, what he says what he says this means that you have to believe it. That's all. You have to believe that this exists. That's all it means. وَمَنْ كَانَ مُحِبًّا لِلدُّنْيَا أَوْ مُصِرًا عَلَى هَوَنْ لَمْ يَتَحَقَّقْ بِهِ Okay, and this, this one simply says that those who have uh, low, low iman, those who do not uh, avoid uh, the, the haram, those who do not obey Allah and His Prophet, they will not feel this. They will be deprived. Okay, so the more you obey Allah, the more you are close and the more you will taste these, these, these beautiful experiences. Um, and especially, he says, especially if, and he says two, two things, two characteristics that if you have, you will not experience this. Bid'at, bid'a, wa kibar. To have an innovation. And Ahl al-Suluk, Ahl al-Tariq, they are the strictest in following the Sharia of Allah and His Prophet. It's so very strict in the Sunnah. So the bid'a and being arrogant, like doing things for, for show. Uh, so there are other other definitions which are uh, which he mentions here. Is it really Maghrib? Hmm? Ah, So um, another definition, so he mentions, he goes through many, many definitions. He quotes these various definitions from different scholars. And he says, وَبَعْضُهُمْ يَقُولُ حَدُّ مَعْرِفَةِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ مَنْ تَهَا إِلَى يَتِقْشَمْ الْأَوَامِ This is beautiful. He says, yeah, go ahead. Bid'ah is which, uh, oh, I'm not ready to speak about Bid'ah right now. Okay. Uh, because it, there's a lot of details which I don't. Uh, Bid'ah is just uh, something which is not part of the, the, the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. Okay? Inshallah. So, this is a beautiful definition. He says that this uh, knowledge of Allah, this ma'rifa of Allah, which is al mukashafa is simply the belief that we all have. Like believing in the unseen, believing that there's angels. Al-Awam. That's all. I'tiqad jami al-Awam. And this is beautiful. Because that just brings us all in, in one fold of, you know, average human beings who, who really cannot have the mukashafa as, as we are talking about here. Uh, Allah. He speaks about his beautiful characters and, and sifat. Basir mutakallim. فنعني فنعني بعلم المكاشفة أن يرتفع الغطاء حتى نتضح له جلية الحق في هذه الأمور. So in in that in those in for for those people for us is that we we know those, the meanings of those names the, the meanings of, of the attributes of Allah and the more we know Him the more we obey Allah the more we understand those meanings. العليم الغفور الرحيم is is the حليم He's the, he's the one that wants you good. So all of these things, we believe in them and they become clear, those attributes, then our mukashafa becomes closer and higher and higher. Um, and so on. But inama, very important. So the heart becomes, uh, starts to understand these things by cleaning the heart. وَتَطْهِرِهَا From what? From avoiding the sins and the temptations. And the, 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 the stronger we are, the easier. We don't even want to get close to those temptations and, 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 and the muharramats. And, and also to follow, of course. And, and as we do that, we follow the sunnah of the, of the prophets. Uh, Shall we pray? And we come back. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى سَيْدِنَا وَنَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدٍ اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم 
so this mukashafa, uh, we, we are saying that, um, like understanding Allah and His attributes, and um, the more we obey Allah, the more we abstain from uh, sins and temptations, the better we, we understand Allah and His names. He's saying that, وَلَا سَبِيلَ إِلَيْهِ إِلَّا بِالْرِيَاضَ so we, we cannot, the only way to, to attain that station is to, to exercise, to do a lot of, to practice your, your, your deen. So this is clear. I mean, like I said earlier, if you think that the Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu did not have this, this level, this station of level, um, it, it's, he had, he, they all had, all the companions, all the companions had a very, very special station of Iman. But the reason why we don't know is because they didn't speak about it. He says here, وَلَا تُسَطَّرُ فِي الْكُتُبِ These things you don't write. You don't articulate. You don't put into words. It's hard. وَلَا يَتَحَدَّثُ بِهَا مَنْ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And the one who has been blessed with that, he doesn't speak about it. If he's really in that state of marifa, he doesn't speak about it. I can tell you, you know what? You know what I saw last night? MashaAllah. I made, I made Umrah and came back. Ooh. <laughs> if I really went to Umrah and came back, I wouldn't tell you. You know who made Umrah and came back? A lot of the great scholars. Guess who is one of them? Imam Nawawi. His student who spent t- 10 years with him or 8 years with him, yes, Imam Nawawi, Shafi'i, the great Shafi'i. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> so Imam Nawawi, he, he lived in, uh, in Damascus for a long time. He was from Nawa, Nawawi, Nawa, Nawa. So he, he, uh, he went and studied there and he taught there and he lived there and he went back and he died where? In Nawa. And when he died, he told, told everyone not to build a darih. It, it doesn't mean that it's haram or wrong. Because when he went and visited Sayyidina Shafi'i rahimahullah, in Qahira, in, in Cairo, he said he saw the darih. And he didn't say that it's wrong. So it's uh, not haram or wrong to build a mausoleum on the grave of a, of a scholar or a saint. So Imam al he says, don't build a mausoleum or, or over me when I pass away. And um, um, so they, they tried to build a mausoleum, and it broke. It fell. And, and uh, a woman asked, the story is very interesting. So they, kept, they tried it a few times, and they remembered what, what he told them, and they stopped trying. Imam um, Nawawi, I don't know how many times it happened, but his student said one time he went to the door where, you know, when you have a city, there's a... There's a there's a wall, and there's a guard. So the guard was there, he was sleeping. He went to the door, the door opened, and his student followed him, and they kept walking. And before he knew, they were in Mecca. They were Mecca, they would tawaf, and they came back. This is the story, this is a scholar. I mean, these guys don't, they don't just make uh, fairy tales. Uh, and many other stories like this, uh, other very beautiful stories like this. So, these things are not things that one speaks about, like unveils, you know, this is what happened to me, and you start talking about it. These things are not stuff that we can articulate. It's hard to, to do that. Um, except for those who are befitted, those who can understand, those who are of that world. And so this is one of the, the some of the knowledge that was very Imam Malik, Imam Malik rahmahullah, he used to uh, spend hours with uh, his teacher. Uh, either Shahab al Zuhri or the other one, I forget. Uh, right now, I have to review my, my, my biography of Imam Malik. He said he, spent, he used to spend from Fajr till after Aisha. Of course, he, goes pray, he would pray uh, uh, Jama'ah and come back. But he would sit with him 
and he be his only student for this was for many years. He says, and I have taught you a lot of it, but much of it I have not shared with you. I have not shared with you that, that knowledge. So a lot, of, a lot of that knowledge you cannot share. Okay, so the second one is ilmu al muamala. So we said al mukashafa wal muamala. The first one, al mukashafa, is al batin, the inside, and al muamala, who are ilmu ahwal al qalb, is the stations or the conditions of the heart. Amma ma yuhmadu minha ka. So he speaks about uh, what they are. So they gave, he gives, gives us an example. The things which are highly desirable, which are uh, praised, like patience. Thankfulness, fear of Allah, hope, content, azud, taqwa, reverence of Allah, um, you know, generosity, knowing Allah, wa ma'rifatullah, wa ma'rifatul minnati lillah, and to know that everything is Allah that has to be has to be thanked for everything. We have to recognize that Allah has blessed us, and we have to thank Him. All of these things, with ihsan wa husn al to to try and be to try and be uh, excellent in in everything. Excellence is, is uh, a character of the believer. Excellence, lihsan, as you know. Try and do, try to be the best in everything that you do. Absolutely everything. Do your best. Don't be hard on yourself. Learn how to do it with, with, um, you know, with with a science. Some people are so difficult on themselves; they destroy themselves. No, no. Be easy on yourself, but, but try and be the best at everything that you do. Every moment, try and be uh, excellent in that. وَحُسْنُ to be To have a good, good, good opinion of Allah, to have beautiful manners, to, be, to have beautiful conviviality with others, to be truthful, and so on. So he mentions all of these, and these are the beautiful, beautiful characters that are uh, uh, praiseworthy. And then there's also that, that, that he calls al-muhlikats. So رُبْعُ الْعِبَادَاتِ what, what's, what are the, the four uh, arba? Uh? No, no, of the of Ihya, there's four books. I think so. I think so. We'll have to go back and read the third one. So we will spend a lot of time on, on these two Al Muhlikat and Munjiyat. Beautiful. Just this. Can change us, can make us into mashallah. But he says, like, like, go back to what he said. These things are not things that you read from the books or you write in, on, on with your pe- pen and paper. It's stuff that you learn, that you learn through through experience, that you learn from your parents, from your teachers, from experience. It, you know, you, you, something that you can learn from a teacher in five minutes by observing him or her, you may take like a lifetime. So a teacher is, is someone who helps you take a shortcut, just like you learn to study, to, to, uh, to, to learn, uh, uh, you learn about modern medicine in five years, what took uh, humanity to learn in 3,000 years, right? So it, it's a shortcut, and that comes from teachers who really know about the science. And so these things that are not desirable or uh, are, are the, the characters that will destroy you, like uh, fearing poverty, uh, to be upset with what happens to you. You always complain, why is this happening to me? Uh, being uh, angry, jealous, treacherous, uh, wanting to be the best, to be uh, always in front of, of others, and to live a long time, and to enjoy this dunya, and arrogance, and anger, and being r- rough, and it's a beautiful word, the anasha. You know this word? To be to be rough, like just harsh. will be animus and to have enmity and so on. So he spends the and we, we spoke about this in, in the past. Uh, you know, we mentioned it very very quickly. That some scholars have uh, counted these to be over a thousand for, for both of them, both of them. Um, okay. So, okay, so he speaks about these, and then he goes into what we've mentioned in the first lecture, which confirmed that it is an obligation to learn about this knowledge. And how, uh, who was it? 
that said be muhaddithun sufin wa la takun sufin muhaddith you have to have knowledge and then you have to have this knowledge you have to have the sharia before you learn about these things don't learn about these things before you learn about sharia so knowledge is very important the sharia the, the fiqh when you ask about bismillah and fatiha and all that very very important um, and then he goes into what he had what he, what he had what he had spent a long time fighting which is the the, the knowledge of philosophy we'll skip that inshallah no problem So right to this um, conclusion that he makes, rahimahullah. And, and you recall how he, he says, I, I don't know if you remember when, when he spoke about um, that, that he was making a case against the fuqaha. Right? In, in reality, he was making a case against the people like, like well, who he was. When he was a faqih, he was a person that had all those problems. Right? I see you smiling. It's okay, don't worry, don't worry. It's okay, don't, that's no problem. So to, to make, so he says, okay, don't, don't worry. He says, don't worry. Um, I have not, I am not denigrating, defaming the fuqaha at all. In fact, the fuqaha are very important. And in fact, those fuqaha that I'm going to speak to you about, have mastered this science, the science of the heart, they have mastered it. So he says, And this is what I'm going to share to you, that I'm going to speak to you about, are really um, very, very sincere. And they only wanted the, the, the hereafter. Uh, and he says, فَإِنَّهُمْ مَا كَانُوا مُتَجَرِّدِينَ لِعِلْمِ الْفِقْرِ Fiqh is not the only thing that he did. This is very important. Okay, this is if you learn anything today, if you're going to learn anything, it's going to be this. It says, فَإِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا مُتَجَرِّدِينَ لِعِلْمِ الْفِقْرِ بَلْ كَانُوا مُشْتَغِلِينَ بِعِلْمِ الْقُلُوبِ وَمُرَاقِبِينَ لَهَا Okay? It's true that they were busy with fiqh, but it doesn't mean that they were not conscious and busy also with the, the knowledge of the heart. And what did not allow them to write and teach about the heart is exactly what did not allow the companions to teach and write about fiqh. They did not have time. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, how much narrations does he have in Bukhari? Aisha radiallahu anha, Abu Hurairah, and Bilal, they all have much more than Abu Bakr. But who's more knowledgeable? We know that's Abu Bakr. The same with um, Umar, the same with the other great companions. These companions did not have time to narrate hadith, to sit down and teach in great, uh, you know, in audiences. So for the same thing, that the same, the same, uh, um, the same thing that did not allow this fuqaha to teach about the heart is what did not allow the companion to teach about fiqh and the heart. So they weren't able to do it. But we are told that uh, some of the companions, it's not going to be mentioned here, some of them did, did teach the things of the heart. And that's where we have the chain of narration of this knowledge. Just like we have the chain of narration of hadith and Quran and everything else. We also have the chain of narrations of the, the science of the heart. And we can, uh, we can pick up that another time, inshallah. Um, and then he starts to speak about who are these this fuqaha, these great fuqaha. He says, The great heroes of al-fiqh and the great leaders of creation are the five major schools of thoughts, what are they? And? Sufyan al-Thawri, in, in this case. 
people have different opinions. Who is the fifth? Huh? What's that? Okay. Anyways, this is just uh, different scholars have different opinions, but Imam Al Ghazali thinks that there, there were five. Because I could tell you that uh, the major ones that have uh, become uh, popular is, uh, is the, the Zahiri. Right? And then there are others. Anyways, we won't get. This is a beautiful summary. So, uh, the school of Abu Hanifa, the school of Malik, the school of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And Shafi, Rahmatullah, Alim Jamian, and Sufyan al Thawri. And all of these were Abidan, Ubad, Zahidan, Alim and Bialum al Akhira, and Fakihan Fima Salah Halk with Fidunia, and Muridan, Bifikhihi, Wajhallah Ta'ala. So he mentions five things. Okay, so just remember them, we're going to go through them, and he's going to give examples for each one of them. So he says, and all of them were, they had Zuhd. What's Zuhd in English? I like that. Ascetism, yeah. Ascetism or asceticism? Being an ascetic. Being an ascetic. Okay. And the second one is Alim al Bi'ulum al Akhira, to be knowledgeable about the, the, the science of the hereafter. And the third the third one. So sorry, the first one is Abidan. They worshipped Allah. They were the worshippers. The second one is ascetic. Okay, they, they, had, they, had, they did not love this dunya. They were divorced from, from this dunya. وَعَالِمًا بِعُلُومِ الْأَخِرَةِ The hereafter. وَفَقِيهًا فِي مَصَلَحِ الْخَلْقِ فِي الدُّنْيَا And they were knowledgeable about the, the, what is, what is, what is uh, useful and beneficial for the interest of this dunya, uh, for the, the people, for this, these people in this dunya. So they cared for the people. وَمُرِيدًا بِفِقْهِ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And all of this is just for the sake of Allah, for, for, just for His pleasure. So these are the five different characters, and, and then he, he mentions, starts speaking about them. And he says, فَأَمَّا So he, he's going to speak about the first one, but he's going to mostly talk about the Imam al-Shafi'i. Yeah, so, uh, al-ibadah, zuhd you want in English? Okay, so uh, worship the worship, like being someone who worships a lot, and zuhd, someone who is uh, dissociated from the world or ascetic, and uh, knowledgeable about the no, the sciences of the hereafter, and uh, knowing faqihan in the interests of the people in this dunya. So they care about the interests of people in this world. And also, all of this, the fifth one, is he only wishes this for the sake of, of, the, of Allah, the face of Allah. Okay? And, and he says, well, unfortunately, the fuqaha only have focused on one. But these fuqaha have focused on all of them. Uh, and now he wants to give us the, some of the ahwal, some of the states, some of the spiritual states that they, they, uh, they lived with. It says Imam Shafi'i. And here he speaks about Imam Shafi'i because he's a Shafi'i. Okay, but he's not being uh, biased. Uh, if we just focused on any one of them, we would see all these beautiful characteristics. But he speaks a little bit about Imam Malik after and Imam Abu Hanifa, and they were all all really really beautiful. Imam uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, uh, he's the you know the master of the the Zuhad. He was so poor. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal was very 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 poor. Um, Imam Malik uh, w- would accept presents in his madhab. In the beginning, he was uh, he was very very poor. Imam Shafi would come and find him, you know, very extremely poor. And one time he came back later on and he found him. He had all these riches, all this wealth. And his house was filled with carpets and and furniture. And outside he had horses and camels and mules. And Imam Shafi almost disappointed. He says, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, what what is, what is all this? He says, oh, you're talking about this? They're all yours. No attachment. No attachment. He said, well, at least keep one horse for you to, to travel. He says, he broke down crying. He says, how, would I, how do I ride a horse in, in the land where the Prophet ﷺ is buried? This is how, how much they loved Rasulullah, so how much they respected the Prophet ﷺ, and the city of Medina, how much they respected the city of Medina. Um, so, and... and um, 
Imam Ahmed had the, the other school. He would not accept presents. So he would see, he was seen like extremely, extremely, extremely zahid and poor. So we have um, Imam Shafi rahmahullah. He would divide the night in three. And the night would start by Maghrib and end at Fajr. So divide that by three. One third for ilm, one third for uh, for ibadah, and one third for sleep. Okay, and you know the story when uh, when he went to stay at Imam Ahmed. Remember that story, beautiful story, Ahmed. He went to stay, and uh, the daughter of Imam Ahmed observed him. And in the morning, they prayed, and she she, she went to her father. And says, I don't know about this man. This the Shafi. I don't know about this man. He prayed with us with the wudu of the night of of Aisha, and then he talk, spoke to to. Uh, to Imam al-Shafi'i, he says, well, I spent the whole night um, analyzing a hadith and I extracted 20 uh, rulings and so on. And he made his ibadah and so on. And he prayed with the same wudu that he had in, at Aisha. So he would he would um, divide his <coughs> night in, in three and so on. وَقَالَ الْرَبِيعَ One of his students, كَانَ الشَّافِعِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ يَخْتِمُ الْقُرْآنِ فِي رَمَضَانِ How many times he would make khatma in Ramadan? 60 times, that's all. One time I gave a little khatira, uh, reflection in, in, in Tarawih, and the brother came to me and said, you should not have done that. People can do this. It's true, but we speak about them to give us inspiration. Just like we speak about the great marathon runners. They can, you, know, you know what's the fastest marathon now? Two hours and 25 seconds. Allahu Akbar. I think I can walk uh, five kilometers and then sleep the whole night, the whole day and night. <laughs> Subhanallah. So, Subhanallah. These, these were these were the, the state of these great sixty khatma, and it was all in salah. Amazing. Allahu Akbar. Um, I, I was um, like, for example, where we could say, how how would it be possible to finish the whole Quran uh, during Taraweeh? And, uh, and, 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 and and it was possible that like, where, where, uh, where there was... In one night, you mean? It, it, yeah, exactly. In one night of Tarawih from Asia, starting from the first page and finishing the last page right, right before yeah. the Fajr. And there were certain companions, certain uh, people, including Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, Ibn Umar, who would finish the entire Qur'an in Salah in front of the Kaaba. So there were only a few people who would be able to do that, who, were, who did that and who were known to have done that. So, 60 khatamat, radiyallahu anhu, and waqa'a wa kana al-buwaiti ahadu ashabi yakhtim al-Qur'an fi Ramadan kul yamin marra. Kana ahadu ashabi yakhtim al-Qur'an. Okay, so once, at least once, so he's, he's, as he's his companion. So they're talking about one of his companions or his student that he would do khatma. And people do that. It's not incredible. I mean, it's incredible for us. Waqa'a al-Hasan al-Qurabisi bittu ma'a al-Shafi'i ghayra layadu kana yasalli nahu al so this is another student of his. I slept with him. I spent the night with him more than once, and he would make <clears throat> he would um, stay in salah the whole third of the night. And and in that case, he would not go beyond fifty verses, not beyond fifty verses. So sometimes he would go through the Quran, and most of the time he would make sure he would. And this shows you the depth of his understanding of Qur'an, the depth of his language, the depth of his uh, hadith and, and, and tafsir and so on. And if he, if he hears one, one verse of, of adab, he would, he would make dua against that and so on. So they, they, were, they were very ubad. And then, وَقَالَ الشَّافِيَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ مَا شَبِعْتُ مُنْذُ Sana. He would be very careful in uh, not becoming full, like not eating until they are. So he would not fill his, his stomach with food because it would uh, harden the heart. So it also removes your, your, your sharpness and it helps, it uh, also encourages you to sleep. When you eat too much, it just slows you down and makes you. Um, less efficient. 
وقال الشافعي رحمه الله ما حلفت بالله تعالى لا صادقا ولا كاذبا and this has to do with zuhud as well ibada so the ibada is not just with reading the quran is also with uh, how you take care of your eyes and your your tongue he says i've never sworn you can say wallah you can swear right we can do that you know the christians cannot do that it's in, it's in matthew I, i checked it you should not swear say that i'm going to do this i swear this is not something that the, the christians do but in in islam it is wara it is just better it's a higher level you should not do that because why why should you uh, because he he's very he, it's it's like uh, it's like celebrating the sanctity of of allah why should i always invoke him just to show what i haven't or have done uh, and he says also One time he was asked about a que- about a question and he did not answer. Not like me, the Shafi. Uh, yes, he said, "Why aren't you answering?" He said, "I will answer when I know whether speaking is better than uh, than than keeping quiet." So he would keep quiet. Um, and one time he was walking in the marketplace with with uh, some of his students. And they heard someone uh, insulting somebody else. Uh, he was a student of knowledge or an, or a scholar, and he says, "Be careful with what you hear, just like you're careful with what you say. So avoid hearing the bad things." There's a lot of movies now we we watch, and there's all, all sorts of foul language, and we become accustomed. That we sit with family, we sit with friends, we just sit and we just watch, and it's become normal. We have been diluted. We have been polluted. right so we just listen to that and so he says be careful with your ears just like you are careful with your tongue and and in this case the reason why he says you should be careful with your ears is because the one who is insulting you is trying to get you angry so when that hits you then you will use your tongue and then you will be doing something bad with your you hear and also with your with your heart um and now so now the second one is zuhd So we we spoke about uh, ibada and then az-zuhd he says amma zuhduhu radiyallahu anhu faqad ash-shafi faqad qala ash-shafi radiyallahu anhu he says and uh, this summarizes the entire uh, subsection here wa man iddaa annahu jama'a bayna al-hubb ad-dunya wa hubb khaliqiha fi qalbihi faqad kadhiba you cannot claim that you love allah and what he has created or or the dunya you cannot claim that you love the dunya and its creator okay If you do that if you say that I love both the same then you are lying. It doesn't mean that we don't ask for the dunya, we ask for the dunya and the akhirah. But when you ask for the dunya, it's not for the sake of the dunya. It's for the sake of the akhirah. Wala tansa nasibaka min ad-dunya means okay don't forget your you for your what is due to you from the world. It means you using it because uh, so they can reach the hereafter. And he mentions um, someone mentioned Al Humaydi خرج الشافعي رحمه الله إلى اليمن مع بعض الولاة في الصنف إلى مكة. So he was he had spent some time in Yemen, and then uh, then he came back, and before entering Mecca, he spent some time. He spent a, just one night. They they built a, a little tent for him, and um, he was given um, he was given ten thousand dirham, a thousand dirham, no ten thousand dirham. And that night, because he was there, everyone knew that he was there. They, they kept coming to see him, and by the morning, he had nothing left from the money. He, everyone that came, he would give him money. He had no problems with that. He was very happy. Gener- his generosity means that you're not attached to the world. And one time he says, "خرج من الحمام." One time he went. To, you know the hammam? It's the salam alaikum. What's your name? Ahla wa sallam. Abu Bakr. Mashallah, the best name. Um, So he 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 went he went to the bath to wash, and when he went out, well, what do you give as as a tip? You know he paid already for his service, but instead of giving a small tip, he says he gave a lot of money. فأعطى الحمامي مالا كثيرا. And one time he was walking uh, or or riding his his mule and his what's what do you call that? The whip, yeah, soap, fell to the ground. And someone p- picked it up for him, and he gave him a lot of money. 
he just he, he was he was per, perhaps we are told that his generosity is unheard of. Now we speak about the Uta'i, we speak about the some of the most beautiful people in, in history, but Imam Shafi'i was extremely, extremely generous. Extremely generous. Uh, um, and this is the, the, the conclusion saying, If you love something, you will hold it, you will not let it go. He was not like that. The dunya was in his hand. It was easy. It was easy for him to let go. Um, and so on and so on. So he tells us another story, and this is about, I remind you, this is about a zuhd. Zuhd is how he is dissociated from this world. Um, one time he was uh, Imam. Um, uh, one time he was sitting with Sufyan bin Uyayna and uh, they heard and they were both listening to someone who spoke about the Raqai. The beautiful story that makes your heart soft and Imam Shafi'i just, just fainted. Uh, and, and they thought he had passed away. And they even said, oh no, if he passed away, the best person of our age has, has, has died. Uh, another story was about um, um, Abdullah ibn Muhammad al-Balwi so he's giving us this beautiful story. He says, I was with, he says, I was with Umar, Banu Nabata. Um, I was, yeah. Uh, and we were speaking about the Zuhad. Right now we're speaking about the Zuhad. And what does the beautiful say, saying say? When you speak about these beautiful people, the Rahmah of Allah descends. All the scholars have said that. When you speak about people who are pure and pious, the, the Rahmah of Allah descends. So we, ha- we are now Benefiting from, from this beautiful Rahmah. And imagine if you speak about the Prophet وسلم, then the real Rahmah comes down. What about if you meet with the Prophet uh, He was Rahmatan Alameen. It was amazing. Anyways, this is uh, the Zuhad. So he says, Qala li Umar. So they were talking about them. And, and one of them said, Umar told me, I have never seen anyone more, what eyes more pious and... Um, he says, I went out with him. We were out, probably they made, uh, they made uh, Umrah. And when they were done, they were sitting in a Safa. So while they were sitting in a Safa, someone started reciting Quran. And he recited, On that day, they will not be able to speak. And they will not be given permission to make excuses. And Sayyidina Shafi, rahmahullah, his face started to change, turn different colors, and then he started to shake and he passed away. <laughs> rahmahullah. This is how they were. I mean, we, we, we're just saying it, right? It's hard to understand. But, but they were really like this. They were really, very, really, very special. Um, the same person who's mentioning this, he says, so Abdullah Ibn Muhammad al-Balwi, who is narrating this, has never met with Imam al-Shafi'i. So he's, they're talking about him. And someone said, we've seen the Shafi'i doing this and that, and this and that. And he says, you know what? One time, I went with my friend to uh, Iraq, to Baghdad. And as I was making my wudu, a young man, Ghulman, so he was young. This man came and he said, Ahsin wudu'aka, yarhamakallah. Make sure you do your wudu properly. You know? <laughs> so he turned around and he saw him walking with with others, and so he made he he turned he's finished quickly, and he followed him, and and he says please teach me something teach me something that will benefit me. Uh, he, when he when he when he was running after him he turned around. Imam Shafi is not uh, is not uh, you know arrogant. He turned around. What do you what do you want? Says, what do you need? Halaka min haja. He says yes please please teach me. And and then he told him some beautiful uh, sayings. He says, "Ilam anna man sadaq Allah naja, the one who ob, uh, who trusts and, and obeys Allah will be safe and so on." And he says, "Do you want to hear more?" He says, "Yes." And he kept giving him beautiful and all of these things. Why why are we mentioning these stories? Is that Imam Shafi'i was telling him, teaching him about the things of the heart. He was not teaching al fiqh. He was teaching about the akhirah. And then he finally says, then who are you? He says, I am a Shafi'i. Or he asked about him, he says, ah, oh, he's an Imam al-Shafi'i. 
and because inna ma yakhshallah min ibadihi al-ulama. The one who truly fears Allah is the one who is knowledgeable. And knowledge, al-ilm, al-ulama is not the knowledge of the books and the fiqh, but also the knowledge of the heart. What was said about Imam Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? Ma faddalakum Abu Bakr min katharatin salatin wa la siyamin, walakin bi shayin wa qara fi qalbihi. Abu Bakr wasn't better than them, wasn't better than all of you guys, all of the companions, because he used to pray more, or because he used to fast more, but because of something which was in his heart. The state of the heart was very, very special, really above what we can, we can, uh, and that is the knowledge. In the min ibadhi al ulama, there's the knowledge of the heart and the knowledge of of the, the other the other stuff. Um, And he was asked, radiallahu anhu, so I'm skipping a lot of, of stories here, and he was asked by, by someone, what is better, sabr, al-mihna, or al-tamkin? Patience, what is al-mihna? Hardship, trials, what is al-tamkin? Hmm? Tamkin is a state where you're literally on top of the world. You're in control. You're, you really are at peace. Whatever you see is not what you see. I am. So he says, فَقَدْ الشَّافِي رَحْمَ اللَّهِ التَّمْكِينَ Which is the station of the, of the, of the prophets. وَلَا يَكُونُ التَّمْكِينُ إِلَّا بَعْدَ المحنة. And this state of, of uh, what did I say? Huh? Tamkin in, uh, in English. Yeah, it's, it's the highest level of, of peace and, and control. That state is will only come after trials and hardships. <coughs> and he gives us examples here. He says, فَإِذَا امْتَحَنَا صَبَرَ So it comes after that. It comes after, so it comes with, um, you know, ta'a, al-balwa, thumma, thumma al-tamkin. Wa ida sabara, so if he dam tahana sabara, if he's tried, he's patient, and if he's patient, he's given that state of control and and peace. Ala tara an Allah wa jal azza wa jalla imtahan Ibrahim. What happened to Ibrahim? You know all the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, and then he gave him tamkin. وَمْتَحَنَا مُوسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ We know the, the, the story of Musa is very long and how he passed through. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned some things. Would that just be surrounded with contentment? No, that's al-rida. And what would be, I mean, I think that would be We'll stop in about two minutes because um, we're almost uh, eight o'clock. Um, so he says, uh, we know what happened to Musa uh, when he was when he fled because he killed somebody, and then he met with, um, you know, um, he ha- and then the, the story with Fir'aun and so on when he came back, and he gave, he was given tamkin. You know what happened to, to Ayub? What happened to Ayub? He was, he, was sick, so. he was sick for how long? 18, 20, 40 years, whatever. So a long time. Uh, we were told that he, his wife made a hole for, for him to, to do his biological needs, a hole on the bed. And he was always perfectly content. He never complained. And he was, his wife was very patient with him. One time he came back, she came back and she saw him. He, was, I had, I, he had, was cured and he was more beautiful than before. Allah had given him this tamkeen, subhanAllah. Uh, that's that's Ayub, Sabr Ayub, like we, we say. And Sulaiman alayhi salam, Makkanahu wa atahu mulkan. He gave him that, that great uh, kingdom that he had was after the trial. Uh, yeah, you are given, but you are given, that's it's a very high station that is that they, he calls here the, the, the station of the. Of the prophets, you know, you have you have people who, like poor people, alhamdulillah, they can 
like, and, and this is beautiful because we, 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 it gives us a lot of hope. A lot of hope that we can, we can have a life of happiness. We don't have to be, we don't have to go through all the hardships. We go through some hardship and then after that we reach a station where we can, we can glide or, or just Yusuf alayhi salam. He went through so much and after that, he was, and it's in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, it was given a tamkeen. But a lot of us, uh, we we see some people who go through a life, mashallah, he got all of these things, and then he passes away with with beautiful ending. Allahu Akbar. Because he, his, his station is not the station of a prophet. But Qadi Ayyad, you know how he passed away? Qadi Ayyad, he, he stood up and he uh, he faced uh, the, the opposing army and they, he lost the battle and then he was killed by the Khalifa of that time. He was peeled. It was a terrible death. And then he was thrown in, in, uh, in the graveyard of, 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 I think, Jews or something. And then he went and, and they fetched him and they buried him and they uh, built a mausoleum above him. And he's one of the awliya of Marrakesh. So uh, some people go through very, very hard because they, they, they can take it. Um, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ مَكَّنَّا لِيُوسُفِ فِي الْأَرْضِ And then the fourth one, which is, what was the fourth one? Maybe we'll just finish these four things. فَقِيهًا فِي مَصَالِحِ الْخَلْقِ So they are knowing, knowledgeable about the things that are uh, beneficial to the, to the people. He would say, He says, I don't care what people say about me. If I'm a scholar, all I wish to know, all I wish to do is that people benefit with what, what I do. And, and he would say also, Ma na bartu ahadan qat, ahbabtu an yahta'a. He says, I never argue with anybody and wish that, that I win and he loses. It's, that's not about, that's not about that. He always wants the truth to come out. And he always wishes, even if the truth comes out from the other person's tongue. Um, and that's the purpose of, uh, of any argument in, in al fiqh. Uh, and, and Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal says, ما صليت صلاة منذ أربعين سنة إلا وأنا أدعو للشافعي. I haven't prayed a prayer since 40 years except that I pray for Imam al-Shafi'i. And that's what they used to do for one another. They would pray for one another because they, uh, they knew that that person was beneficial for everybody else. Uh, as long as he's alive, people will benefit. So I pray for him. And when he passes away, I pray for him because he deserves that I pray for him. Um, and he says... They would say also that there is not one single person that has not benefited from Al Imam Shafi'i. Others have prayed for him for also for, you know, you know what happened to Imam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah when he passed away. There were there were thousands who have come to his grave and read Quran, and that was not his his opinion. Is that you don't read Quran for the dead, especially in the grave. But people loved him, even those who who disagreed with his opinion. They went to his grave and they prayed for him. That's how much. That's what the scholars are. How how um, how how people love them. And Imam Malik, um, as well, he says he had all of these five um, different elements. Uh, the, they asked him, "What do you think about seeking knowledge?" He says, "Well, seeking knowledge is what is useful for you from the more from the time you wake up in the morning to, to the moment that you sleep." What is beneficial for you, this is what is important that you learn. Knowledge is what is beneficial to you as long as you're alive. Um, and he was excessive and exaggerating in the way that he glorified knowledge. Uh, he would, um, someone knocks at his door, people would visit him from different parts of the world, and, and he, would give, he would give precedence to certain people, the people from Quraysh, would enter because they're from the time of the Prophet Wasallam, then the people from different parts of the world, and they would, he would, he would receive them. And before they come in, he would say, "What are they here for? Fiqh or Hadith? If, if it's if it's for, for for Hadith, he would take a shower, and he would fill the house with scent, and he would sit on top of a of a law of a big pillow, and then he would allow them to come in. He would look very beautiful, and all of this to glorify and to sanctify the, uh, the knowledge." 
we'll stop here, inshallah. If you have any questions, we can, we can talk about it, inshallah. Barakallah. Jazakumullah. We will, we will soon just move into the Laibadat. Um, uh, any questions, any comments, any observations? Barakallah. Huh? This? This is the Ihya Ulum al This is Imam al-Ghazali himself. And the tahqiq is by Imam al-Iraqi, who lived 300 years later. Tahqiq, the authentication of the hadith, the authentication of all the hadith are by the great scholar of al-Iraqi. It's a difference of opinion, that's all. It's just difference of opinion. Uh, you can make dua, you can make dua for the dead. He said those, the two opinions, one, there's more than one opinion. One opinion is you don't read Quran for the dead. You can do a sadaqah for them. You can do hajj for them. You don't pray, you don't do salah, you don't read Quran for them. Okay, so that's an opinion. The other opinion is your children can do it for you because they're your deeds. If someone passes away, three things remain. One of, the, one of them is your, you know, the deeds of your children. Okay? Uh, sadaqa that people benefit and the knowledge that others benefit from. That's another hadith. So that's the second opinion. The third opinion is, yes, you can read Quran. And, and even, in, so in that one, the third opinion, there are different opinions as well, is can you read the Quran for someone who is passed away in the cemetery or not? But uh, inshallah, you can read the Quran for someone who is dead in the cemetery or or not. And we have to respect the other opinions. And is that also the case if the um, body of the Rahul is not there with you? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can do it miles away. You can read for, for the persons. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Excuse me? This is the first one. Yes. Okay. Sure. Yeah. You can read Yaseen, Fatiha, Qurwa Allah, Ahad. And this is the beauty of, uh, of Islam. It's so simple. Um, you can read Al-Fatiha when you're walking. You can read on the bus. And you could dedicate it for... But when you read Quran, whether you read it from the, the Mus'haf or from memory, you should say, you should have the intention. And you say, this is for me. And similar rewards for that person. So you want rewards as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is amazing. Subhanallah. He can give it to you and to others at the same time. And some say that uh, some scholars, when they read the Fatiha, they do it for themselves and everybody who's dead and alive. And so, uh, inshallah. Um, so, in, in, um, uh, like when preparing for this interview, when it comes to worship for, for, uh, for our Shafi, and this was mentioned that that, uh, that one third of the night we would basically dedicate for no more than 50 verses. But then we'd have like, at times during Ramadan where, where um, where they'd be able to have like uh, like two two completions of the Quran in the same day. Yes. So so like which one like would they be focusing on? Because like they would be focusing on no more than fifty mm-hmm. for um for who should uh, be focusing us? us? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Us it's uh it's minimum and continuous. The best deeds that you should do that Allah loves is minimum but regular. So even if you do just two rakats a night, that's amazing. Allahu Akbar. If you do a hundred istighfar during the day, but every day, it's better than to do a hundred thousand istighfar one day and then to, to quit. Because that affects you every day. It will affect you. That two rakats will affect you the next day. Sorry? You're doing something for the sake of Allah? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, oh, I see. That's a good, that's a very good question. It's a very good question because a lot of people, uh, when they, they do ibadah, they do it just to be safe in the, in the hereafter, to go to Jannah. Right? Uh, when you do istighfar, it's for my sins. Right? Ya Allah, forgive my sins. What am I doing it for? My own, my own um, uh, interest. Right? But the, the scholars, so it's good to start this way. Just do it. I'm, I'm like a, the lowest. I do it for, for that. But the scholars have said, we should do it because Allah is saying you, is asking you to do it. For instance, when he says in the Quran, Istaghfiru Rabbakum, innahu kana ghaffara. The first thing is the order, a command. Allah says, ask forgiveness from Allah. Ask forgiveness from Allah. Don't, don't, don't try to ask anything else. Just, and then he gave you the benefits. Istaghfiru Rabbakum, innahu kana ghaffara. Yusiri samaa midrahara. All of these. All or so many beautiful benefits and rewards in this dunya and in the hereafter. It's beautiful. That's for me because I, I have a hard time doing the first one. But what we should try and aim for is just obey Allah. That's the relationship that we have with Him. When you pray, it's because Allah said to obey four rakat, three rakat, and so on. The same for the Quran. I'm doing it because Allah says, "Ratil Quran tartila." Iqra kitabak. No, that's the other one. Iqra. Allah tells us to read, to read. And if you read, you are you are doing ibadah. But if you're reading so that you earn the rewards, because the Prophet ﷺ said, "You will not. You don't read. You don't read alif, except that it's one." Uh, one harf, so you have ten rewards, and lam and mim and so on. So you get all those rewards. There's a lot of rewards, and there's a lot of hadith about the virtues of reading certain verses and certain uh, uh, surahs. If you read this, uh, the surah that you mentioned about tabarak, you get that, and so on. But you do it for Allah first, and the second one, if you do it purely for Allah, it's best, and you will get the other stuff. Even the other stuff you will get, inshallah. So try to focus on. Obeying Allah alone, just do it for Allah, for sake of Allah. Allahu alam. The same with Salawat al Nabi. We'll speak about that one day, inshallah, or in khutbah or something. When you say Allahumma salli ala sallam Muhammad, there are so many, so many virtues. Subhanallah, so many beautiful virtues. But Allah in the Quran says, Sallu, and end the story, Sallu alayhi wa sallim taslima. It's enough of of an honor that Allah is inviting you to join Him and the angels to do the salawat. But then there are many hadith that says, فَإِذَنْ تُكْفَ هَمَّكُ وَيَغْفَرْ There's many, many beautiful vir- uh, virtues and rewards. Uh, it's a good question. Zakumallah. Zakumallah. Radia. Vazi. Wait. Wow. Trop intense dans une dans une dans une acte. Okay. Okay, pas, pas le, pas le, la, la dernière. So she's saying, if you, if you, if you're uh, fasting on on a Monday for Arafat, can you also make the intention to make up a day from Ramadan and the the, the Sunnah of doing Monday? And what else? Another Sunnah, mashallah. You can, you can, huh? What? And the Arafat, and Arafat, Sunnah of Monday, Arafat, and making up. Uh, so, uh, Allahu Alam, I th- the madhah that I know is that you can only have the intentions for other sunnah, not the part. Allahu Alam, maybe, and maybe I'm wrong. I may be wrong. I think this is a, be- it's a beautiful question. So, you're making the intention of making up Ramadan and you're doing it on a Monday. I think you only get the reward of making up Ramadan. Allahu Alam. 
But if you do a sunnah, you can do multiple intentions. For instance, if you come into the masjid, and you have, what, what do you do? Sunnah of Dhuhr? Huh? Tahiyat al-Masjid? Istikhara? What else? You can do something else too, if you want. Huh? That's, that's not the Sunnah of Dhuhr. Or, or let's say Salat Duha, you know, Tahiyat al-Masjid, yeah. And the Sunnah after Wudu? Yeah? Yeah. I'm doing the Sunnah of after Wudu, the intention, Imam Ahmad Zarruq said that Tijaratu Al-Alimi Al-Niyya The Niyya is, the, is your, the merchandise of the scholar or the student of knowledge So the more you, you and they used to practice this intention The intention was very very much part of their, their conscience yeah. Good question, mashallah Il faut que tu le fasses euh, indépendamment. Tu peux le faire lundi, tu peux le faire un jeudi, mais je ne pense pas que tu peux ajouter le, le, le mérite, les mérites de, de lundi et de jeudi. Wallahu alam. Je vais vérifier. Juste pour dire. So you, you mentioned that it's not bad per se, but um, I've, I've heard oftentimes that it's bid'ah is in the context where people uh, almost incorporate it into the deen uh, to the extent that they go there and make du'a like specifically because they're there and they're near the body. Um, not, of course, uh, to, to a lot, but like... To, to, the, to the dead person? Sort of, as okay. if... Uh, that person will multiply the effect of the dry, whatever. Um, so where's where's that fine line between um, yeah. the grave uh, being? Shall we answer this today or another time? Okay, okay. so it's, it's, it's a good question. Not a oh, very also, good question. I, I also heard the grave should be uh, very simple, very minimal. Yes, the hadith says so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, the fuqaha have spoken about that. Um, I won't get into the fiqh, but just think about what the scholars of the the land, like the, in, in the scholars of, of Egypt, for instance. Centuries of, of scholars have not decided to break down the, the mausoleum of Imam Shafi'i, or Hussein, or Zainab, or Nafisa. It means that it's, it's permissible. Even if there's a difference of opinion, then there are things that become fine line where people that people do things that become wrong, and the scholars can speak to that, inshallah. Like I said, this is a I don't want to get into that. No, no, I, I, it's a good question. I'd love to answer, but not today. Well, we'll be, mashallah. Jazakallah khilar dalik. Shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be praying it's in the masjid, yes. right? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. some people would would uh, would refuse to pray. Some people would refuse to pray in that masjid, and I've seen where scholars have prayed there because they're not praying to the grave. They are not making sujood to the grave. This is a human being who had passed away. He's a he's a alim. He's a scholar. He's a saint, and so on. There's no problem. We love. We love the the salihin. Their sanctity is the same alive and dead. Okay, just like you go and visit your, your parents, you know, grandparents. You love them. You visit them. They will eat the same way. You visit them and you pray. Imam uh, Shafi'i prayed in the grave. You know the story. He went to visit Imam Abu Hanifa. The time came in for a salah, and he prayed. And when he prayed, they told him, did you change your madhab? So why? So you prayed like Imam Abu Hanifa. So I prayed like Imam Abu Hanifa as a respect to Abu Hanifa in his presence. 
So he prayed there. In, in, in the presence of the, the grave of Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi. He did not pray to Abu Hanifa. Impossible. This is the Ummah of Tawheed. La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah. We don't worship only Allah. We only worship Allah. Jazakumullah khair. I'm not, I don't want to hold you much longer. I'm also enjoying, I really, I'm enjoying, you know, sitting with you and, and you, you're all very humble, you all love knowledge. The least that we, we learn by discussing is that this becomes like, like a, a habit for us, for our minds. This exercise becomes natural. When I sit with scholars, when I hear scholars of fiqh, I'm like, I'm, sometimes I don't understand, but I enjoy everything. I just listen. I love it. I just love it. Wow, this and this and this and this. If you ask me anything after, I so I don't remember anything. That's why I asked my teacher, Sheikh Imam Ahmed Rashid al Hayri, who's the mufti of, of the Haram al Nabawi. He's younger than me, and he's a mufti. Uh, there's like a handful of muftis in, in the Haram. Um, so I told him many years ago, I told him, Sheikh, I'm reading. Uh, I love this book. It's hadith. It's the Sharh of Muwatta. I read and read and read, and the Sharh and Sharh and Sharh. I said, I don't, I don't remember anything. It's fun. It's beautiful. He says, Well, you know what you should do? You're doing the wrong thing. You should go and study the summary of fiqh, and then study it 50 times. So you take fiqh, one one school, and study it. So this was what about um, about 25 years ago. He told me that. And study it 50 times and memorize it. And some of the scholars have take some of the scholars they take these summaries of fiqh and review it every night. They just go through it shh, every night. Like they take about 200 pages and they read it like they're they're with like a litany. That's how you gain knowledge is by starting with the the summaries. Allahu alam. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakumullah. Thank you.